This is the Dark Base 701 from Be Quiet. It's basically a smaller and in some ways cut down version of the Dark Base 901. Some people are probably going to argue that this case doesn't need to exist, but I actually think it's a welcome addition to the product stack because it takes some of the pro level features you can get with the Dark Base series and pushes them down into a bit smaller form factor. And that's important because not everybody wants a PC case that's the size of a freaking refrigerator. So the Dark Base 701 should appeal to high end system builders that want top level performance but don't need or want all the extra space that comes with the 901 and it'll save you some money because it's quite a bit cheaper. Here's a quick side by side with the Dark Base 901 to give you an idea of the size difference. It's pretty significant when you look at them both beside each other. I like to look at it like this. The 701 is a case that can fit on your desk beside your monitor whereas the 901 might have to go on the floor depending on your setup. All of Be Quiet's latest cases that I've tested have moved to this back panel thumb screw system where there's just two screws at the back that you can slack off there and then the panel just slides right out nice and easy. That's a better system than having the screws right up against the glass pane because you don't get as many fingerprints and it just kind of keeps everything nice and clean. The front panel is using a mesh design. You can see that here. It's ventilated everywhere from top to bottom and kind of along the sides a little bit too. That's awesome. It's going to give the front intake fans access to a ton of fresh, cool air. And then along both edges, you can't see the one on this side in this camera angle, but from here, you can see this little white bar here. That's an addressable ARGB strip. There's one on each side. And we'll take a closer look at that when we get some hardware in here and we can get everything powered on. If I pull this front panel off, there's a little set of contact pins and a little PCB on the inside of the front of the case frame here. And what that does is it passes data and power through to those ARGB strips, which means there's no wires to connect. And that's awesome because, well, let's be honest, it absolutely sucks when you have to connect wires to removable parts of a PC case. This dust filter comes off without any tools or screws. It's just magnetic, pops off like that. And that gives you access to the fans in the front panel area. And this is a pre-installed 140 millimeter Silent Wings 4 fan, but you can install up to three of these here or three 120 millimeter fans or radiators all the way up to 360 millimeters. One of the features I really like about the Dark Base series is this front mounting area for the fans and radiators is actually a removable tray. So if you just undo these two thumb screws, Watch this. This whole thing pops right out. It's still being held on right now because there's a pre-installed fan there with a wire, but you get the idea. This thing comes out, you mount your fans and radiators outside the case where there's more room, where it's more easy to work, and then you come over here, you stick those little pegs in the bottom, you do up your thumb screws here really quick, just like this installed. It's that easy. So that's a really great feature that saves a lot of time. The I.O. panel has your main power switch, two USB Type-A ports, one USB Type-C, headphone and mic jacks, and then two sets of manual controls for fan speed and ARGB lighting. It's pretty simple to use. Each press cycles the fan speeds from 600 to 1200 to 1900 RPM, and the ARGB button will cycle through tons of colors, modes, and effects. It's a nice alternative to just being stuck with a software app for all your lighting, but at the end of the day, you can still do that if you'd prefer. And, uh, you know, to me, it's always nice to have options, and that's what this gives you. The panel on this side comes off just like the glass one, two thumb screws at the back, and then it slides right out. And what you've got here is some sound dampening foam material on the inside to help reduce overall system noise. And that's a pretty big noticeable difference between the Dark Base 701 and its bigger brother, the 901. This is the only spot on this case you're gonna find this, whereas the 901 gives you a lot more options to help control sound. Back here we have two spots to mount two and a half inch SSDs with an additional one right here. And you can also fit two three and a half inch hard drives here. And if you want to install this optional bracket that just fits in down here like this, there's a couple of screws that'll attach it in there. That'll allow you to fit one more three and a half inch drive. But there is a catch. In order to use this bracket, you've got to buy one of Be Quiet's drive cages that works with it. Your drive mounts in here, it slides in and attaches with a thumb screw. That's kind of weird if you ask me, because if they're giving you the bracket, they should give you a cage to be able to use it. Otherwise, this is completely useless. Really quick before we move on, I want to show you the way drives mount in here, because I think it's a little bit unusual. There's some holes on this panel here, and what you've got to do is take these little rubber things, I don't know what they are, little rubber rings, and stick them into the appropriate holes for either HDDs or SSDs, and it's a pain to work with, I'm not going to lie, they not easy to get in there to work with your fingers. But anyways, once you've got them popped in, what you do is you take your drive and you've got to install all these little pins in there. These are included in the package, so you stick these pins in. They're 
kind of threaded and they've got a screwdriver head on top, like a Phillips screwdriver, so you can tighten them down that way if you can't do it by hand. And then the way your drive mounts is it just pops into these little rubber things and sits there. There's no hardware to screw it down and nothing to really lock it down into place. To be fair though, it does feel like it's holding it pretty well. I don't think it's ever gonna fall out on you or anything like that. But here's what I find really weird about the way this setup works with three and a half inch hard drives in particular. The back of the drive where you've got your connectors for your SATA and your power, so your data and your power, what happens here is it's right in the middle of the main cable channel pass-through. So if you plug stuff into there, you're actually gonna be able to see it on the other side of the case in the main area where your build is. I think that's kind of funny. It doesn't give you a lot of options to work with and it kind of forces you to have some visible cables in your build, which is really not cool. But I will say it's not an issue with two and a half inch drives because they mount vertically the other way so the cables won't be visible in that spot. This hub links up all the fans for you, so this lets you install eight PWM fans in total. There's three pre-installed, you can see plugged in here, and down here there's two three-pin ARGB ports as well. The whole thing gets powered with a single SATA power connector that you're gonna to have to connect to your power supply, and then there's a TAC cable that plugs into your motherboard in order for it to read out the fan speeds and control everything through your motherboard if you want to bypass those front panel controls altogether. And if that's something you're interested in, all you have to do is press that uh, fan control button, press and hold it for three seconds, and that'll switch over to motherboard control. There's lots of channels, pass-throughs, and tie-down points back here for your cables. It looks like they really thought out cable management and did a good job maximizing the options for you back here with the amount of space available. There's tons of room along the bottom for your power supply and cables. The maximum supported power supply length is 250 millimeters, which is crazy big. It's basically unrestricted. You can put as big of a PSU as you want down there. Up here at the front, there's some fan mounts, so you can fit either a 120 or 140 millimeter fan down there, and that entire bottom section is actually ventilated, and there is a dust filter along the bottom, although to get to it, you have to remove the front panel, and then once you've done that, you can just grab it, and it just pulls out like that. Around back, we have the IO shield cutout area. This is a pre-installed 140 millimeter Silent Wings 4 fan, and it'll also take a 120 and small 120 millimeter radiators as well. And one thing to note back here is these fan mounts are slotted and that'll give you a little bit of adjustability. You can slide the fan up and down when you mount it and that can help improve compatibility on the inside. So if you've got a thick radiator up here or something, maybe you gotta slide that fan down a little bit. Gives you that extra little bit of flexibility. We have seven horizontal PCI Express expansion slots and then three vertical. Those three vertical will let you mount pretty thick GPUs there, but keep in mind that third slot or first slot, depending on how you look at it, is pretty close to the edge of the case where the side panel is gonna be mounted. And that side panel is completely solid tempered glass without any ventilation. So there will be some restricted airflow there if you've got a really thick GPU in that vertical mount that takes up all three slots. That is fairly common in a lot of cases though, unless you're dealing with like really big full towers or open air frame designs. This is a removable PSU mount bracket, so that comes off, attaches to your PSU, slides back in, and then just attaches onto the back of the case with some thumb screws, makes it really quick and easy to mount your power supply, and that's standard on Be Quiet's cases these days. The top panel's an all mesh airflow design, couple of thumb screws at the back that you loosen up here, then the whole thing just slides off just like that. There's lots of open space here to access the fan mounts, and this is a removable tray, just like up at the front. This one has two screws, one here and here. The whole thing is gonna slide out so you can mount everything much easier and then throw it back in. This is the third pre-installed 140 millimeter Silent Wings 4 fan in this case, and it will take three of these, up to three of these at the top, or three 120s if you prefer, and radiator support is 120 to 360 millimeters up top here. The interior feels really spacious. They don't have any weird drive mounts or cages sticking out all over the place. It's all nice and clean, lots of space to move around in here. Motherboards are supported from mini ITX all the way up to EATX, so you're not restricted in any way in terms of the type of systems you can build in here. Maximum CPU cooler height's 185 millimeters and GPU clearance is 430 millimeters. Again, really good numbers here, not restrictive in any way. These plastic covers here just pop off on the inside and those open up access to more mounts for your drives. So you can mount them on the interior side of the case. I don't know why you would wanna do that though cause like who wants to look at drives in their build? But the option is there. But the cooler thing that you can do with this is you can actually mount a uh, custom water cooling loop 
pump reservoir combo here if you want. So if you're doing a custom loop, you've got an option here. And then this center panel that I just popped off is just a pass-through point. So you can pass your cables, your power and stuff like that from that pump block all the way through to the back without having to run them anywhere else. This cover on top of the PSU shroud can come out and that opens up a little bit extra room if you've got extra thick fans or radiators mounted in the bottom position on the front panel here. But also they ship this airflow ventilated panel here with the case. And if you pop this one in, what that's gonna do is give you an additional airflow passage inside the case. So if you've got an extra fan down there pumping air in, some of that air can come up into the main area of the case. But also more importantly, if you use that fan mount that's in the bottom there, like right flush on the bottom, you put a 120 or a 140 down there, that air would have nowhere to go unless you put that panel in there. So you slap that guy in there and that air is gonna come right up into the main area of your build. This whole front section of the shroud is removable, just pulls out like that, nice and easy. And that opens up a ton of space to work inside here, get your hardware mounted, move your cables around, very versatile. And if you wanna get nuts, the layout can be completely inverted. So you can flip the motherboard panel to the other side and have your GPU up at the top and the window on the opposite side. That's a feature I've so far only seen on Be Quiet's Dark Base series. My test system hardware here is an ASUS Z790 ATX motherboard with an Intel Core i7-13700K. The CPU cooler is the Corsair H150i Elite LCD XT. It's a 360 millimeter all-in-one. There's 32 gigabytes of DDR5, a Corsair 1200 watt power supply, and an Intel Arc A770 limited edition GPU. I added two additional 140 millimeter Silent Wings 4 fans to the front just to fill up that space and maximize the cool airflow that's coming in. With the glass panel on, you can see how close the GPU sits to the side when mounted vertically. And this art card's only dual slot, so there's more space here than you're going to get with something bigger. And the other spot to look at is the top mounted radiator clearance where, you know, this board doesn't have big VRM heat sinks and that RAM is actually really low profile. That's Hyper X Fury Beast, no RGB, no crazy heat sinks or anything. And you can see how little space you really have there with that radiator in that position. So, um, you know, if you want to put something thicker up there, you could run into clearance issues depending on the other combination of hardware that you have. And just for reference purposes, so you're aware, this Corsair cooler is a 27 millimeter thick radiator which is really not all that thick. Now that we got hardware installed and the systems powered on I can quickly show you these front panel ARGB light bars. So if we press the ARGB button up top here it's just going to cycle through the different pre-programmed effects and colors and settings and there are a lot of them so you can sit here and do this for quite a while until you find what you're looking for. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because this is pretty straightforward stuff but you know just to give you an idea what it looks like there's a lot of different stuff here and it is pretty nice they're like ni nice accent bars nothing over the top doesn't look like an alien spaceship or anything crazy but they did a pretty good job. I ran the system through a few test runs of Cinebench R23 at each of the different fan speed levels using the button on the front I.O. panel of the case. The difference between level 1 and level 2 in terms of temperatures and noise is really not all that much. So there's not a huge advantage to going with the slowest fan speed. You might as well just go to level 2 and get a little bit extra performance for basically no more noise. Level 3 is where we see the biggest change compared to the previous two tests where temperatures are really starting to come down. But you are paying a hefty noise penalty for that with the total over all system noise topping out at 45 decibels. Overall, for me personally, building in the Dark Base 701 was a good experience. It's got a big, open, spacious interior and a well thought out design. And that just helps make the build process go smoothly and easily. And that's exactly how it should be when you're paying for an upper tier product like this. There's a lot of cable management options here. You can fit big, high performance, high end hardware. The build is actually really strong and solid and it's highly versatile. The only two real drawbacks as far as I'm concerned is the limited amount of storage space plus that mounting system's a little bit, uh, you know, kind of weird. And then the other thing's going to be if you've got a big cooling system like a big CPU cooling radiator like a 420 millimeter, well, that's just not going to fit in here. Everything 360 millimeter below, yes. 420 is just out of the question with this and also if it's too thick and your motherboard VRM heat sinks are too big, certain combinations of hardware are just not going to work. With all that said, I think the Darkbase 701 is going to check a lot of the right boxes for a lot of different system builders and I think it fits well into the Darkbase family offering some of those premium high-end features in a smaller form factor and at a lower price point which is always a good thing.
If you want to pick one of these up or just check out the latest pricing on the 701, I'm going to have some purchasing links for you down in the description, so check those out. And I'll also throw some more specs and details for you down there as well. Give the video a thumbs up and get subscribed on the way out, and we'll see you soon.